Oh, you didn't know? Oh, hello, folks. I am the one, the only hobo Tom, and as you can tell by my very distinctive near Bullock Club like headgear. It's that special time of the month. No, not that time of the month. Oh, uh, there goes my cat. She knows what time of the month it is. She knows what month it is. Spiketoberfest, baby! Yeah! Make a lot of noise and just be a general jacket. Oh, you didn't hear me say that. But no, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some AEW. And again, I do apologize. This has been a week of chaos! And for some reason, I'm just doing things late. Because I didn't get a chance to watch AEW until today, Thursday. And so I'm probably going to put off making said predict predictions video. Probably Saturday. I don't know who's going to do that. Maybe maybe it'll just be me. I'll, I'll just be here in my biker gear. Yeah. Sounds good. And then tomorrow's going to be the dual episode of... Smackdown, Friday Night Smackdown, and the last Friday Impact. That was so fun to have Impact on Fridays, though. Can't believe they're actually going to change. But enough about that, though. So that's like AEW. So AEW, oh, the pyro. This is not a Wednesday Night War. This is a pyro war. Who can out pyro the other? Indeed. So, so show starts off is going to be uh, one of the tag teams. Uh, they're going to have two tag team tournament matches, I, I, I guess, tonight. Um, the first one is, was, wow, amazing. It was SEU comes down, they have their, their music plays, and they get jumped by the Lucha Brothers. Yes, yes, yes. Cero. Miedo. There we go. Miedo. There we go. No fear. Again, <laughs> geez, it's terrible that all the Spanish I learned either from Bach or pro wrestling. That's never a good sign. So they're jumped by the Lucha Brothers and Christopher Daniels, the fallen angel. Oh, did he read a package by pile driver on that stage? I'll tell you what. The package pile driver might be the best pile driver yet. And there are some good ones. Uh, so we start off SEU. It's um, Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian take on the best friends. Trent Breda and Chuck Taylor. Yeah, I always have to think. I just know them as the best friends. I'll tell you what. The best thing that AEW has going for it is the tag team wrestling. Because, woo! That's some good stuff they have. Again, <laughs> what did I put down? I mean, it was... Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, all the, all the... The fact that these are true tag teams, they know how to tag team wrestle. They do the, the blind tags. They do the double teams. They do the, the, the corner double teams. Again, especially in the corner, they do the all the old style double teams that I remember. Even going back to the AWA, WCCW, uh, a little bit with the NWA. So, so yeah, so it's got me in your corner, beat him up for five count. And I say, hey, I'm done. Next person to beat him up. So that's pretty good. Again, the, the, the double team moves are so fun to watch. And with these two teams, they're really smooth when they do them, too. Uh,. So eventually, because Scorpio Sky wasn't actually slated to wrestle, he's still here in his street clothes because he's in the sneakies. And I got a new pair of gym sneakies for me, too. Because mine, I think the toe's getting beat up. And it's been about... Yeah, it's been about six months. So that's right. Because I got them June, July, August, September, October. Eh, five months. Five months for ten dollars sneakers, not bad. That was about right though. Now, obviously Scorpio Sky sneakers are of a higher caliber. 
and there's going to be someone coming back from Halloween. You'll see. You'll have to watch the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League to see that. But uh, So Scorpio Sky starts with the sneakers. So I think Chuck Taylor took a sneaker off, bit him in the toe. Bleeding's good. Especially when it's just blatant. That's always fun. Um, there was a fun Tower Doom spot. Uh, Scorpio Sky does eventually clean house. But best friends do get a chance to hug it out, though. And then it's just everyone flies, which is always fun to see. Uh, the SEU finish, it's pretty good. It's like a powerbomb dropkick combo. It's good looking. I mean, it's not not the worst combo. See, let's see, it just seems like they threw two moves together. And it's like it's like the taste of home or something. I forget, like Shock of Home or I don't know, something like that. But this was a fun, amazing match. Again, it was really fast-paced. They kept on going. I mean, if they did a rest hold, they did it with purpose to, to really set up something, not just there to catch their breath. This, folks, I'll tell you what, AEW does tag team wrestling right, because this is a surf and turf match. And then Santana and Ortiz come out, LAX, versus Jobbers and Matching Trunks. I think one was John Silver, and I forget who the other person was. Jobber and McJobbers, and they wrestle like Jobber and McJobbers. Because LAX, all the way, they just decided to beat the heck out of them. Um, for the most part, it was a squash match. Which is rare to see. Um, I know people have said or talked about, are we ever going to see squash matches in AEW? This was a squash match with a purpose, because again, you have Santana Ortiz kind of new to the new to the whole thing of AEW. It makes sense. It gives them a little bit of an introduction. They hit the Gringo Killer. I don't care what they call it now. It's still the Gringo Killer to me, and that just looks amazing. LAX against these guys. I'll, I'll say the jobbers did their job. They got a thumbs up for me. It was fun, and I'll tell you what, for a squash match, this was a real cheeseburger of a match. Then there was a Chris Jericho promo, and I guess the weird thing is that LAX was like just like, so yeah, you're the best, and you could hear them too. So they have to work a little bit on their mic work. Um, next match was probably the low point of the show. And I don't know if it's just me. Could be. You never know. It was Britt Baker, DDS, taking on Rio. Rio is tiny. I thought Nikki Cross was short. At least Nikki Cross had muscle. I don't think Rio has that much muscle. I mean, especially when compared to Britt Baker. Britt Baker's not muscular, but she's tall. She's proportion. Congratulations, Miss Cole. <laughs> Obviously, I think Britt Baker has to go back and ask Adam Cole, baby! How to sell a little bit. Because uh, there was, especially the opening part of this match, it seemed like Britt did not want to sell. But yet, she didn't want to know so. It was a really weird dynamic. And I think part of it was, Britt Baker is so long and lanky, in comparison to Riho. I somewhat understand why they put the belt on Riho. I don't necessarily agree with it. I think Riho chasing the belt from a monster like, Nyla Rose would be better. Even if you put it on Britt Baker, at least everyone, she could have the target on her back. And she could ask, Adam Cole, baby! What it's like to have the target on his back. So, it, it just seemed... Eh. Uh, Riho kept on going for the dumb leads. The classic Face finisher is generally one move that needs a setup. And of course, Britt Baker is the heel. Has like that tooth pulling thing, which is like a, 
like a Rings of Saturn plus the Mandible Claw combo. So it was okay. Um, it wasn't botchy, don't get me wrong. It just really didn't seem smooth. And it also didn't feel fight, fight rough. Like, you know, there's like, uh, there's some, some wrestlers, Pac's a great example, where he doesn't, he's not necessarily the smoothest wrestler, but it feels like he's in a fight. So like, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to punch him. And then I'll do something. Again, makes sense. You have that air, you have that believability. And when you see Riho, it's just hard to believe a 90 pound woman could be a champion. And Britt Baker should just like pick her up and, I don't know, spank her or something. I mean, Rio's tiny. Um, Rio did win, however. I think they're kind of focusing a lot on the champions, which is good. If they keep on doing it, though, it's going to get old because it's going to be one of those things that you always expect. And when you don't get it, you'll be like, huh? And I do understand this is just the third show. So, again, they do need some of that. To me, I don't know. It just seemed like a can of soup. And we had Marco Stunt and Jungle Boy, the boy and his dinosaur, versus the boy from the jungle. Because Luchasaurus, I guess, hurt himself. He strained a hamstring or something. If you're going to be tall, you don't want to strain the hamstrings. They're painful. They took on the Lucha Brothers. <sighs> Lucha Brothers get all pyro. That's all they should ever have is pyro. They don't need music. Pyro all over the place. I'll tell you what, Marco Stunt, I didn't realize how small he was until you see him against Pentagon Jr. He's not necessarily the tallest person either, but when you put a short person in with someone who's shorter, that someone who's shorter looks tiny. Uh, I can, and of course, they did the Cerro Miedo. And then Marco Stunt bit him. <laughs> Again, Bravo! Marco Stunt knows how to use his size, which is good. Um, again, hey, get whatever advantage you can. Um, then they, then together, Marco Stunt and Jungle Boy had like a pair of flying flippy DDTs. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know the body could twist, flip, fly, and defy gravity the way those two do. That was really good. Uh, Marco Stunt almost got killed, though. Um, Pentagon kicked him in the corner, and it's just like, whew, that looked like it legitimately hurt. And again, the size difference. A little bit of believability, because do you really think a 10-year-old, someone the size of a teenager, could beat, on, could beat up a full-grown adult? And I'm talking about a scrawny teenager, too. So, uh, again, it's just kind of, I don't know, it has an air of believability to it. Um, they, they hit the Canadian Destroyer, and then they just killed poor Marco Stunt. Um, eventually, again, the work by the Lucha Brothers, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Jungle Boy is really good, though. He's no slouch. He can fly, too. Um, again, they do all those flying hurricanes. They're fun. They're good. It's good to watch. It makes sense. Uh, Marco Stunk big hit with the arm breaker and a package pile driver. The good thing about that is that he doesn't really have to tuck his head that much because the head doesn't hang down that that low. Um, probably my thing is that this match seems to be way more competitive than it should have been. Uh, I mean, it was still fun. Again, all the Pyro and the Lucha Brothers, I don't think they can do anything wrong. This was a good, solid cheeseburger of a match. Next, we have John Moxley and the Bastard Pac taking on New Japan Bullet Club. Oh, I'm sorry. Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. Wow, wow, wow. Bullet Club, 
too sweet for life. Or this way, I always forget. There we go. For life. Wow, wow, wow. The Blood Club. Bang! I guess in Paige's case. As they're still missing the machine gunner. <laughs> Carl Anderson. So you have cleaner Kenny Omega. Hangman Adam Page. Taking on John Moxley and Pack. And it starts off as a brawl. And it was fun. Um, so many times. Um, again, Moxley and Pac, they know how to tag team wrestle. They must have seen a lot of NWA matches when they were kids. They know, hey, if I get this guy in my corner, my partner can beat him up before I have to tag him in. And I have five seconds, but I can beat him up. So five plus five equals I have ten. So we have ten seconds. Ten, ten, ten extra seconds of being the snot of someone. Makes sense to do that. And of course, they're, they're kind of more heelish. Whereas Kenny and Hank and Adam Page, they're, they're, they're more like tweeners. So again, it's always fun to see that. Just nostalgia is a heck of a drug, folks. Uh, Page eventually goes after Pac. He doesn't even care that Moxie's in the ring. Kenny tag, tags in Hangman himself, Adam Page, and he just goes right after Pac. He doesn't care about Moxley. Uh, Mox, John Moxley does seem like he's enjoying himself, though. He seems more intense, more relaxed. <sighs> Relax is not the right word. But he's like, okay, I have some control now. Let's see what I want to do. And, and hey, he's getting paid to do what he enjoys. Always important, folks. Um... <laughs> And then Kenny Omega just hits the Snapdragon suplexes. He had a Snapdragon suplex party, folks. Because he was just one after the other on, on Moxley and Pac. Then everyone flies. This is AEW. Everyone flies, which isn't too bad. Then it's uh, John Moxley versus Omega. They just go toe-to-toe -to -toe for a while. Uh, eventually, Hangman Page tosses in the barbed wire broom. And a barbed wire bat. And a barbed wire bat. Wait a second. Why would Hagman Page do that? Just send in the broom. But and then they start to do like um, sword fights with broom and bat. And eventually, Pox like, yeah, I don't want any of this nonsense. He took the bat, tossed it out of the ring. Moxley clobbered Pox and left. So then it became a two-on-one on poor Pac. And not good. Uh, Kenny Omega and, and Paige hit a powerbomb standing five-star frog splash combo. And that makes sense. Two-on-one. One always loses. Unless you're Braun Strowman. So with that, uh, Kenny Omega, the, the bullet, 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 bullet club for life. From New Japan Pro Wrestling won. The fact that Kenny Omega and Hangman and Page took home the win. This was, again, a really fun match. It gives the dynamics between all the wrestlers. This is a surf and turf match. And I think in a match that was kind of lacking was the uh, main event. Again, they're really defending all the titles all the time. It's good because it's the third show. Uh, they have to have buildups for this stuff because just saying that, yeah, you're a skateboard punk and, and paint your face, eventually it's not going to be enough of a reason for a fight. At least a challenge. I challenge you. So it's Jerry, uh, Chris Jericho, the pain maker, versus Darby Allen. Uh, Darby Allen's smart, though. He actually comes out with his skateboard. If you're going to be in a Philadelphia street fight, well, you need a bottle of Grey Goose. That being said, you should bring a weapon. And a skateboard is a pretty good weapon. Uh, Darby Allen, he starts eating up Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho is really good. Uh, Jericho obviously has a much more slower, more deliberate pace. Not necessarily a boring pace, but it's slower, more deliberate. He's the older of the two. He knows how to pace himself. Uh, it's a thing like an MMA where you get like old man muscle. 
where you can do a lot more over a slower pace, but over time, versus young man muscle where it's like, go, 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 go. <laughs> punch, 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 punch. Old man muscle, you're like, Quap. And you make blows count. Versus just going, I don't know, playing, hitting a punch bag or something. So that's kind of the best way to describe it. That Jericho is the old man muscle. Again, the dad bod going on. Um, again, this just seemed more like a wrestling match than a Philadelphia street fight. If I think Philadelphia street fight, I'm thinking gray goose can smash over people's heads. Keyboards, cheese graters, trash cans, chairs, golf clubs, forks. No, that's a New Jack match. Mm, yeah, New Jack match would be a Philadelphia street fight. Uh, Chris Jericho, he got busted open too. Chris Jericho knows how to bleed. Evan! Oh, the late great Dusty Rhodes is so happy. Finally, someone's bleeding. I gotta see some juice, baby. Ooh, yeah. Like my did in the ANWA. Uh, Darby can sell. And he does some of those painful sells. That's insane. Um, eventually, <laughs> Chris Jer Dar uh, Darby Allen gets a little bit of an upper hand on Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho grabs some, like, gaffer's tape or duct tape. He learns something from his time in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He learns something from Yano. He learned how to tie up people's hands. He tied up, he, he taped Darby's hands to the back, to his back, and began to beat him up for a while. Every so often, Darby would have that, that, that slick comeback. But then Jericho power bombed him on top of the skateboard. Ouch, that had to hurt. And eventually, um, just when you thought Darby Allen was going to get the upper hand, Jack Hagar just gives him like a punch, knocks him down. Jericho puts him in the line tamer. Ref has to call it. Darby Allen cannot intelligibly defend himself. It was a fun match. Again, if you're going to have a street fight, Chris Jericho at least wasn't pants in a t shirt. If you're going to have a street fight, again, especially in Philadelphia, Grey Goose Bottle, Cheese Grater, Keyboard, Trash Can, Fork. Five important elements. Of a Philadelphia street brawl. And it was kind of cool because they did announce, I think they were at uh, Temple University. It makes sense that they're using smaller venues. It seems more full. At this point, again, they couldn't sell at the Ocean One. And that's not necessarily big. So it makes sense for them to go to smaller college towns. You get a younger audience, you get more people involved. I like that. Uh, so this match itself, it was it was a good cheeseburger match. And I'll tell you what, overall the quality of AEW has been surprising. The one thing AEW has yet to get right, granted it's 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 like four pay-per-views. And three shows in, they need to do something with their women's division because it's floundering, baby. That that Riho, her forehead's too smooth, and she has too much baby like skin. She has to bleed. She has to. She has to get juiced. So that's my only thing. I I don't think they have that many women in the, in the division anyway. Only shown Britt Baker. I know they've shown more. Awesome Kongs there as like a player coach. Britt Baker. Riho. Some other Japanese women. B Priestley. I don't know how long she's going to be there. Though. Kylie Ray. Kind of like, I don't know, it's doing her own thing now. That's it. I mean, I hate to say it, but the, imp the, the league with the most women, the most stacked is Impact, hands down. Um, at least across the board, it's Impact. The upper card of WWE stacked. 
then you get into the mid card and you're like, everyone's good. But they just seem the the mid card between W W E and Impact just seems different. And again, it was minus the women's match. It was a fun show. Really a good surf and turf show. And that's it for tonight. Um, check in tomorrow. Or I'll hopefully I'll be a little bit more awake for my Red Wine and Friday Impact and SmackDown show. Be safe out there, you stupid, crazy, drunk bikers. Bye.